um, alleged threat to his life. And so there is pivotal No, evidence. no, Pisco, what the fuck? So he All made a this No, 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 fuck this, fuck this. Are you serious? Okay, wait, jump. Like, Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I'm really, really disappointed in you, Connor. You're always disappointed in me and Pisco. You're always disappointed in me. I mean, Tell I, me I to start off by saying, you know, I really enjoy our talks, and I think that, you know, you and I, eventually, you know, we get into it sometimes. But I think, like, this has been the biggest combination of disgusting and stupid points that you have ever brought to bear in a conversation. And it's some of what you've told me before, but you've just been wrong on so many things. Um, and I and I really want to sort of take you to task on on whether or not you even, like, believe in our constitutional system. I mean, do you, do you really think that um, the prosecutor is muddying the waters by trying to impeach a witness on a prior inconsistent statement? You don't think on that- Whether or not, okay, you're gonna have to be very specific. I, I just have the feeling that like, you're very creepy about lawyers, you're very creepy about procedural rights and constitutional liberties, and you think that police should be able to just take liberties and, and do whatever they want at all times. How are you saying this in a fucking conversation where I'm trying to make prosecution harder? No, because first of all, your creepy comments are both directed at defense attorneys and prosecutors. You're an equal opportunity hater of, of these lawyers. Okay, um, and the defense attorneys will legally be allowed to be as big a piece of shit as they want. Isn't that what you want? No, we, what we want is a, is a vigorous prosecution and a vigorous defense. But you have problems with, with something uh -huh. as, as mundane as impeaching a witness on their credibility. Okay, so can you be specific with what you're saying? Yes. I mean, it, it seemed like you had a problem with bringing up uh, Kyle Rittenhouse's lies in the lies. context of being cross-examined by the Please prosecution. Explain. Please explain. So when Kyle Rittenhouse said that he didn't shoot anybody, was that a lie or was that the truth? To who? To a, a person as, after he shot Rosenbaum. Okay. Let me... Wait, I so, just want to be really clear here in moderating. I don't believe that anybody testified that Rittenhouse said that. I think Rittenhouse said he didn't remember. Or I think Rittenhouse said he shot one person or somebody, but not multiple people, I think was the thing. I think that there was um, contention over that but specific let's just statement. Assume, just, let's just assume it for the hypothetical. Assume it for the hypo. Okay, okay. Just want to yeah. be really clear. There, there right, are other ahead. lies as well. Yeah, sure. Let's let's get into those after this one. Okay. Well, well, just assume so, that, there, that there was a lie um, and, and that... He actually lied and said, and he he did in fact um, say that he didn't shoot anybody. Okay. Okay. Lie to whom and in what context? Or do you just want me to answer the question for you? Lie to a person about the incident in question. Okay. So that I'll answer the fucking question, so we don't have to play fucking twenty questions. You just fucking kill someone in what you view as self defense. You think that you're fucking surrounded by people who are going to be hostile to you. Somebody asks you if you just shot that dude and you say no. Is That's that a moral? I'm sorry. Is that a moral? Uh, is that like a moral judgment of your you're character? Like, you're actually like not even engaging right now. The, the question is not Explain can, how. can you justify the lie? The question is, can the prosecution use uh -huh. a lie to impeach the credibility of a witness who is testifying, by the way, to certain facts for which he is the only witness. As far as I know, he is the only witness uh, or the only evidence that exists for being hit in the head is Kyle, right? I mean, that, that's my understanding. The only evidence that he was- There's a life, his life video was of it. What are you talking about? Of him being hit in the head? Before he fell down while he was running away from a fucking mob? No, bef before that incident, there was another, he alleges, I think, another two hits to the head. And also, okay. if, you, if you don't like that one, um, uh -huh. he's, the, he's the only witness of Rosenbaum's um, alleged threat to his life. And so there is pivotal No, evidence. no, Pisco, what the fuck? So he All made a private is, comment. No, 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 fuck this. Fuck this. Are you serious? Okay, wait, jump. When, Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Been... Hold on, rule. When I'm in session, okay, no rhetorical questions like, are you serious, okay? Just get out your arguments, okay? Try to be nice. Yeah. You can scream each other. So, okay, so listen, so, so there was, there, there's multiple Wait, wait, let him finish his point. Okay, what were you going to say? Go. Yeah, okay. So, fucking, 
We have had evidence for the better part of a year. I made a fucking video in September 2nd of 2020 showing Rosenbaum walking up to repeated fucking uh, of the militia fucking members and saying that he was going to fucking kick their ass and kill them and this, that, You're missing the point, bro. On me and all. I, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm missing shit. Yes, the fact you that you think that that is not fucking context for Rosenbaum's state of mind before he fucking chased no, Kyle Rittenhouse is fucking so absurd. Counter points, you don't even know the point I'm making. What I'm saying okay, is- Okay, so make the fucking point okay. then and stop being a bitch. I, I'm not I'm not saying that there isn't other evidence that Rosenbaum threatened Rittenhouse. I'm not saying that there isn't evidence that Rittenhouse, oh, sorry, that Rosenbaum made statements to other so people at the scene. I'm saying that Kyle Rittenhouse alleges a separate statement by Rosenbaum that he personally said he was going to kill Rittenhouse. I'm not saying that Rosen that Rittenhouse didn't have a reasonable fear for his life. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm just claiming that there's a an alleged statement made by the decedent um Rosenbaum that okay. who who for proof of which is only through um Kyle's word. The only reason I bring up these cases to say that his his uh, testimony is evidence and his credibility, the extent to which you believe Rittenhouse it, it is absolutely relevant whether he is lying about key events that happened close in time contemporaneously. Now, if you want, you can say he had a good reason to lie. That's an explanation that the that the defense can give, and maybe it's a credible one. But to say that the prosecution is muddying the waters for impeaching a pivotal witness in the case, you are out of your fucking mind. So let, let's let's follow your fucking logic real quick, okay? Let let's say that Kyle's lying, okay? Let's say that let's, let's say that he's lied about Rosenbaum. Okay, so he lied to somebody on the scene, right? Which I think is understandable because you just killed a guy in front of a fucking angry mob. Probably not your going to be your most truthful moment. Uh, then let's let's think about uh, the oh Rosenbaum said he was going to fucking kill me or some shit, right? I would assume, based off of the corroborative evidence from Rosenbaum's demeanor earlier in the evening, and him sprinting across a fucking park parking lot at somebody who's running away from him that we can put two and two together. Am I Wait, hold on. Okay, here? let me clarify. Wait, 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 before, so I'm going to go back and forth on this a million times, okay? P we're not arguing about any of those other facts. Okay? So what Pisco is saying is that there is unique testimony that Rittenhouse alone can testify to. And if okay. he is allowed to testify unquestioned, I mean, he's the defendant. Obviously, the case is going to go his way. So is it not fair for the prosecution to point out inconsistencies in his statement saying, hey, you said this, this was not true, you said this, this was not true, and make them defend those false claims. Is it not fair uh -huh. for them to do that if he's allowed to submit like the, the sole testimony to some events? Isn't it okay for them to attempt to, to impeach him as a witness on those grounds if we're gonna rely on his testimony in other areas? That's what he's goes saying. Sure. Okay, actually, actually, yes. And I think I can answer this in a way that might be agreeable. But you said it was muddy in the waters, didn't you? Okay. Uh, you do you want to hear Didn't my you explanation? Say it was in the waters to impeach him you, on his you, on his lies? Do you do you want to hear my new explanation that might be agreeable? Well, or I just want to bring up something that was like ten minutes old, so you can bitch about it. I mean, are you Dude. changing your position? Is my question. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm modifying my position. Sure. Okay. So, um, so what I'm modifying my position to is that if you think that uh, Kyle's uh, personal ability to tell the truth or a lie is relevant. And that you're gonna fucking you know use this as a line of questioning in order to corroborate the fact that he's a liar and he's padding his story and all that kind of shit. Yeah, of course, it's perfectly relevant to the fucking case. Uh, uh, let me adjust but that real I, quick, for you, Connor. Um, it is oh whenever God. you are testifying on the stand, taking the stand. This is also uh -huh. partly why you were also wrong about the criminal convictions and and the and the standard for it. You are always putting your credibility on can the we, line. And one of the instances in which you can thing at a time? one of the instances in which you can bring up the criminal convictions is precisely when you're taking the stand because they go to your character for truthfulness. Oh, that at least that's the the the, the typical rule. And so you are your credit when you're taking the stand and you're the your witness, your credibility is always a relevant issue. Okay, cool, beautiful, sexy. I'll learn it when I go to law school eventually. Okay, so. If you if you think that Kyle Rittenhouse is a liar and he's made a previous statement that fucking um, that would demonstrate that he was a liar and you think that, you know, basically you can you can corroborate that. Do you think that asking whether or not he's a liar specifically within the context of having just shot somebody and running away from a fucking mob that's probably going to want some fucking vengeance for what just happened? Do you think that that is like, you know, like a normal circumstance in which we can evaluate the truthfulness of somebody individually? Or do you think that you should maybe that goes to weight. Examples? That goes to weight of evidence. That doesn't go to admissibility of the line of questioning. And that's precisely what Destin was trying to get through your head. 
is that that is a that is a question for the jury ultimately to determine how credible um, or or how exculpatory uh, exculpatory or um, mitigating the circumstances are in the context in which the lie is in fact told. But can I real you don't quick say that the prosecution is muddying the waters by impeaching impeaching the witness? Just as something but, that might go to further how important this might be. What if it was the case that we say it is actually totally reasonable that Kyle lied here because he was super stressed because he was really worried? Maybe that is the case. But maybe he also lied about something earlier that would have been essential in establishing that he was like, like in an act that was self-defense that he didn't provoke. Maybe he said, maybe there was a really stressful situation earlier where he told Rosenbaum, hey, if you're going to fuck around, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you and kill you if you keep doing this or whatever. Um, maybe in th those circumstances, maybe he lied about that because he was also similarly stressed because he was being chased by a mob or because there, there were you. a lot of people around, right? That's why it's essential to establish um, the credibility of a witness, right? Okay. So let's let's go to my example then, because this would be uh, anti-malarkey. I would not view this as necessarily malarkey. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. What? Do you want me to use a fucking technical term? No, because, because real quick, the thing—the reason why I don't like the term malarkey is because it's a form of begging the question. If it's ridiculous yes. because it seems ridiculous, then obviously it seems ridiculous yes. to you. But everybody's going to say like, "Well, this is malarkey because I agree with it, and I agree with it because I agree with it." It just—it doesn't really mean anything. It's kind of like when people say like, "I think that this country what needs to return to common sense." What word do you want sense. me to use? What word do you well, want? You me have to use? just talk about what we're talking about, not like saying like, I, like "It's." I'm just saying that what you're saying is the equivalent of saying we need to bring common sense back. Well, what common sense to some people means throwing gay people off of buildings. To other people, it means, you know, four-year-old kids are... Whatever, yeah, no, whatever, I'm, right, okay. no, I'm happy Peace Coast here for this, actually. Okay, <laughs> so would you say... Okay, so th this is my thing in particular and why I got all fucking panty twisted about the fucking prosecution on Twitter, as I want to do. So very specifically, when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the unfolding of events at the second shooting, right? Kyle's running, he falls over... Uh, it looks like he's hit on the back of the head. He claims to have been hit on the head. The video seems to support the fact that he was hit on the head. Uh, the Despite the physical fucking evidence and literally a videotape showing somebody running up behind him and his hat popping off at the same time, the fucking prosecution tries to imply that uh, he just got tired and lightheaded. Is that appropriate or is that even... I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's other it's... details? It, so, so, so yeah, please tell me lawyer brain on why that yeah. was needed to be implied within the situation. I mean, sure, it, it's an easy question uh, to answer, and ultimately, it's the same answer we just gave to the lying question, which is the plausibility of the prosecution's theory, or indeed the defense's theory, goes to um, the weight of the evidence. And if if you say oh, this doesn't smell right, because um, uh, obviously, you know, through my lived experience. It has to be the case that whenever you fall down, it's due to a recent, um, uh, I don't know, tr There's a, a videotape of it, Pisco. Okay. What the fuck? Then, then that should be a very easy argument for the defense to dispatch. But what you're proposing is Why is it is being that forwarded in the first place if it's known okay. to be not true? It's, that's, that's, that is the problem, which, what Destiny tried to call you on multiple times, which is we use these trials to determine the weight of the factual theories in them. And what you want to – there is some gatekeeping role that the judge plays, certainly. I'm not going to deny that. And one of the things that you mentioned was um, evidence that could be extremely prejudicial. Um, another one you said is like – what Destiny mentioned was if you were – arrested and convicted of, of robbery multiple, multiple times in your past, you're not necessarily going to be able to bring that up, although there are instances in which you could bring that up, uh, to prove a separate crime, um, because we know that evidence is so prejudicial. That's one of the reasons why the court was admonishing the prosecutor was he considered um, the evidence about Rittenhouse's statements um, with respect with to, yes, um, that those were propensity evidence, that you're using essentially your evidence that he's a bad guy to show that he has a propensity to be a violent asshole. Um, and so there is a, a gatekeeping role that the judge can play, but it's on grounds that are well-trodden, and it's not just this general loosey-goosey, uh, well, it, it, whatever yeah. feels right, whatever's malarkey. Um, it, yeah, it has yeah. To do no, let's frame this up. I, I like this, I like this. So, um, okay, so very specifically, I'm, this is actually another reason why I'm happy you're here, uh, despite you calling me dumb repeatedly. Fuck I'm you sorry, I'm sorry, I, I can't um, retract that. I apologize. It's okay. I love both of you fucking assholes um so all right so my question is 
is it? Uh, so, so Dusty was kind of asking about like, um, you know, etiquette versus fucking law and like all that kind of shit. Like, like you know, like what is the, you know, all that, all that. And very specifically, the example that we were using was, um, you know, bringing up the fact that somebody communicated to you through counsel as like implying some level of like nefarious behavior. Number one, is that like an etiquette thing? Number two, is that like, um, is that something that's either frowned upon or something that's like literally like legally prohibited? So let's let, let me give you a different context in which it might come up. So suppose that you have a witness who has made a deal for immunity with the prosecution. You think the defense is, should be able to bring that up? Uh, say that one more time. Sorry. Um, witness makes a deal for immunity in, in exchange for his testimony on stand. Okay. Do you think that defense can bring up that deal for immunity? Yeah, yeah of course. Okay. So this, Wait, these are kind. Of, can they actually? Blindly, Peace go. I'm just curious. Yeah, impeachment with bias. I mean, that's the first thing that you're going to do. Um, is you're going to say, isn't it true that you had a conversation, uh, sir or madam, with the assistant district attorney? Oh wait, isn't but this is this is a, this particular person isn't being charged with a crime though, right? Oh no, I'm just using the content of why it might be relevant. They, to they might be avoiding a crime by. Okay, uh, but I'm just saying that, like, I, I'm sorry, just to understand, because like, if you agree to immunity, you can't be like. It, somebody can't like charge a crime with you early, uh, later on, and then like your immunity deal no, no, is brought up because it's like, wait, what the fuck? I thought I had immunity. I this is someone. this is in the context of the per person who's been given immunity mm -hmm. testifying as a person who presumably has been given immunity. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. And you're like, oh, he has an incentive to lie. Why? Because he made a deal with the prosecutors. Therefore, he's chummy chummy with the prosecutor yeah, yeah. to say whatever they want. That's impeachment by bias. Mm -hmm. And so I don't actually know the exact context of which um, he brought up the, the requisition of a lawyer, but I'm guessing it's has something to do with impeachment of bias. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing if there's some relation between um, the different attorneys. Uh, I would be very careful with that line of questioning. And, and keep in mind here, um, it's not quite as similar as commenting on um, getting a lawyer for the defendant if it's a witness's lawyer. But um, I would need to know more facts about that. And I wouldn't come to a determination that any mention of lawyers is per se muddying the waters or misconduct by, by an attorney. Okay. So actually, this is actually really interesting because I think I'm getting a little bit more insight that I, I probably didn't have previously. So the uh, so basically, uh, I'm trying to analogize this into the uh, into the situation over like relevance of uh, having the lawyer there or whatever. Um, and basically, if I remember correctly, I think the prosecutor implied that the footage that had been provided to the prosecution was edited. So um, bringing up the fact that it was passed on through a lawyer um potentially would would imply although i think you could just say like hey the shit that you sent us was like all fucking clipped up um you know like, like basically you, could, the... you could say like hey this motherfucker like clipped up the shit that he sent us he didn't send us like raw hours long footage the defense made that claim with the prosecution video provider uh i believe no no no, no. i think the opposite i think that um a a, a, a corroborative witness for written house um basically provided the prosecution with footage and it was all clipped up. Okay. I mean, it sounds like then that it's probably going to be go, going to the way it's evidence used to dis, for the, the jury to discount the, the videos as presented. That okay, seems like these, a total fair game. The, okay. So these are my weakest points so far. So I'd like you to take on my strongest one and What's then the maybe we can see, see if I can learn it. Um, so very specifically, like when it comes to like the, the incident of, of the second thing where, um, you know, he gets popped over the head, gets lightheaded, whatever the allegations are, he falls down to the fucking ground. Um, and then he's kicked in the face. Um, somebody tries to hit him with a skateboard and then gross crits fucking pulls a pistol on him. Yeah. With, within that line of questioning, there were, there was a number of things that I felt like are exactly what I'm talking about. Malarkey, if you will. So... Um, the, the things that I would highlight would be very specifically video being available of, you know, basically somebody obscuring Kyle while he's running and then him following or falling down after his hat gets popped off, which I think we could infer would be a hit, but the prosecution tried to imply that he just got like winded or lightheaded. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's, hold on, hold on. Can, you can, can you tell prove me, that's not the case? You can tell, you can tell me why it's not wrong in a second. Okay. The, the second thing that I would say would be oh, it was just a foot. And then the, the next thing would be the just the skateboard. And the next thing would be, um, you didn't know whether or not he was going to kill you with the gun and heavily implying that it wouldn't be fucking reasonable to assume that fucking five people beating the fuck out of you and pointing a gun at you would be, uh, you know, threat of imminent death or great bodily harm. The, yeah. thing, the thing about the thing... All right, hold on. The thing about this to me 
is anybody who's been in like a violent confrontation, and especially lawyers who prosecute and defend violent confrontations all, all the time, they would know that when a violent situation unfolds within uh, three or four seconds, there there takes a certain amount of time to like observe, orient, you know, uh, respond, react, like all that kind of shit. So it feels like a really disgusting fucking implication that it's like, oh, well, you should have paused between uh, zero uh, and 0.5 milliseconds and evaluated the foot that almost kicked you. Then you should have paused again between 1.25 seconds and 1.75 seconds when a fucking skateboard went across your fucking skull. And then you should have paused again at uh, 3.25 fucking seconds to 3.7 seconds and evaluated whether or not, is this guy just drawing a gun on me because he wants to apprehend me or is he drawing a gun on me to fucking kill me? And that is so counter to everything that we fucking do within violent confrontations, within like security service and within, I'm assuming what like the judicial system is aware of from like previous case law and also like, you know, just existing in this world for so long that it's fucking disgusting because to me, they're trying to make implications that might result in a prosecution on what is ultimately bullshit. So if you okay. could explain that to me, I would be super I'm happy. fucking happy to have a reasonable explanation for that. <laughs> There are kind of like two questions embedded here. The first one you, you mentioned when you took issue or umbrage with the fact that the prosecution is implying a different factual theory for why Kyle Rittenhouse fell. Uh, mm -hmm. Ultimately, lawyers are not allowed to knowingly lie to the court. That's a, a rule of ethics. We're bounded by a rule of ethics that prevents um, knowingly false testimony. And so if it was the case that we could physically see the hat being um, in, the, in the video, directly being sort of knocked off by by the skateboard in a way that is absolutely unequivocal then in that moment the court might step in and say you can't testify uh, or he might be um sanctioned for trying to provide testimony that is just clearly not true so the the court will sometimes play gatekeeping roles or, or the rules of ethics will will prevent lawyers from off offering evidence which is uh, knowingly false and you can get a lot of trouble for that. So this is also so this is something that can be enforced in the courtroom because the Absolutely. defense or the prosecution will oftentimes call an objection if false testimony is being entered by somebody that's asking questions. So, for instance, if the prosecution says a, a false statement like, Rittenhouse, isn't it true that you said this or we saw this happen? If that didn't happen or that testimony hasn't been entered yet. It was in fact not in evidence or something like mm -hmm. that. There, I mean, there's the defense yes, can absolutely, absolutely say objection. This is not true. And the judge can choose whether or not and this has happened in this case. And the judge can decide, yeah, this isn't true. I'm not going to allow you to enter this or whatever. You can do yeah, that. But, OK, but, but this is this is the fuckery. OK, Th this is actually a, a perfect example of fuckery. OK. The, the, you're saying that lawyers can be held for fucking making knowingly false statements and all that kind of shit, but <laughs> fucking snakes, man. The, the thing about it is you can make implications as long as it's plausibly deniable that you didn't fucking know that it was a false statement at the time that you said it. You will get what fucked I mean, if you do this over and over again. Like, you can't just come in and go like, oh, I'm okay. sorry for that. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Like, you can do this a few times, but I imagine that depending on the no, judge no, no, and depending on no. your history, you'll, you'll lose the, the, you'll lose the jury. About, I'm not talking about lying. I'm not talking about lying. What I am saying is that there's a, I mean, we could pull up the video right now and take, take a fucking look at it, see if my memory is as good as I think it is. But the moments before fucking Kyle falls down, I almost guarantee you why the fucking prosecution says you got lightheaded and you fucking fell is because there's a dude who runs at a 45 degree angle immediately behind fucking Kyle. And then there's another runner who obscures what happens, but then Kyle falls over. So they're presenting an alternative theory that like 99, 99 fucking percent is fucking bullshit. But at the same time, they can sit comfy within that fucking 1% and imply a fucking more nefarious thing. This is kind of what I'm talking about with the fucking bullshit. Hey, they're allowed to do that. If, if uh, you said yourself that there are cases um, where people have been wrongly put away when people thought as you did that it was just so clearly obvious that they're guilty and, and who could look at these set of facts and conclude something different. Oh, and then we get like DNA evidence or another angle and that changes the whole ball game. And so unless there's irrefutable evidence that invalidates a, a factual claim or implication, um, or if it's just an insinuation, um, these lawyers should be given latitude to run these trials the way they want to. And the jury will ultimately be the one to determine whether something is plausible or implausible. That I would even say just on your statement alone, you should support it because you said they provided a narrative about him falling over that 99% is probably bullshit. 
if it is are true you, that it's ninety nine percent, then that one percent might be the case that they're aiming for, right? If it's only ninety nine percent, then like that's it's okay. their job to make that one percent case so to can the jury. I, can I say okay? I fucking get it, but this is the fucking wormy shit that I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> it's not well, wormy. I do want to get your legal. I oh, get I'm legal I'm part. sending you some fucking wormy shit. Where the fuck is our chat? Here we go. There's the fucking video. This video has been available for a full fucking year. Uh, go, like, Desi, I don't know if you can share this on fucking stream or not, but go, if you go to a fucking minute 30 and you no. fucking watch this shit, hold on. This is all evidence that we can all take a look at that's been presented in fucking court multiple times. Uh -huh. What is this going to show? Just describe it. I'll buy whatever factual thing you said. Okay, so let me describe it to you. Okay, He's so I'm running. watching right now. Kyle Rittenhouse is running down the street. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. Now it keeps cutting back to Rosenbaum. It, it literally, it's like 149 to 155. Yeah, like I see a cow running down the street. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, I'm sorry, and this sucks, but unfortunately, when Kyle is being quote-unquote hit in the head, there's two people like blocking him exactly. Now, it looks like a person behind him... <laughs> Dude, I, you fundamentally misunderstand the trial process, okay? I don't know what else to say. No, I don't. I don't you, misunderstand. No, 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 no. Hold on. I'm, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not giving you. I'm not giving you opinion. I'm telling you, you are. You fundamentally misunderstand when you use statements mm. like 99. percent That's why we have trials. <laughs> yes. That's that is exactly the reason why, right? So I'm watching this video. I agree with you. It almost for sure. If I saw my kid do this, it would be enough for me to punish my kid. Okay, I'll say that. But would this be yeah. enough for me to convict a man? Now we're in a much different ball game. The standard is higher. So when he goes to hit Kyle in the back of the head, yeah. it is blocked by two people. You can't tell, right? Now, it looks pretty obvious. And I would assume that a jury would look at it and say, like, yeah, it looks like he got hit. But the 1%. That's what we go to trial for. Yeah, no. Okay, I, that, okay, that is okay, okay. But I, 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 don't, I don't like being repeatedly told that I don't understand. I well, understand. because you keep saying things that I are like... I think it's bullshit. <laughs> Why is it yeah, bullshit? Go ahead. Why no, is it bullshit? You because there's fucking corroborative that. Uh-huh, go ahead. You saying it's bullshit shows you don't understand. In that these First of all, in these trials, who bears the burden of, pr of proof in these criminal trials? The fucking state, right? The, the, the state does. And so uh, if this well, were flipped the other way around... Wait. For the, okay, okay. So the affirmative defense stuff, it, it changes between... Yeah, I was going to say uh, it's kind of on the defendant, but yeah. Um, sometimes... Self-defense, that's what you're talking about? Yeah, um, although I, I do not think that um, Kyle bears the burden beyond a reasonable doubt. Not beyond a reasonable doubt, that is true, yes. Um, and so uh, there are defenses for which uh, the burden of proof is shifted to the defendant. But mm -hmm. for the most part, um, there are okay. burdens in these criminal defense cases. And if the facts were flipped the other way around, there's no shot that you would say something like the defense should not be able to argue their 1%. So, so right? let me, okay. So let me, let me ask you, let me ask you this because no offense, you're both being fucking lawyers right now. So what, what is the implication in saying that Kyle, despite video evidence, instead of getting hit in the fucking back of the head, as the fucking video would apply, imply, what is the purpose of implying that instead he just got dizzy and laid down in the middle of the room? It's offering the jury an alternative hypo hypothesis for what occurred. Oh, what so, so you said yourself and Destiny acknowledged. Extrapolated. Wait, okay, hold on, hold on. I, wait, wait, it's all of this is building the idea that Kyle thought his life was in danger. That there is a clear yeah. and present danger. If you feel like you got smacked in the fucking back of the head, that goes towards building the case that you yeah. felt like your life was in danger. Mm -hmm. If you didn't actually get hit and you turn around and you start blasting, well, now your your idea that you're in clear and present danger now it looks blessed. a lot different. It's all it all goes to build towards that idea of I thought my life was in danger. I've already been attacked by two people. Well, it's important to establish the fact that you had been attacked by two people. That might be essential to this case. But I, but wait, I, I do no, want to wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. There's okay. You can answer my question, but I kind of want to push back on this because again, I think this is bullshit. But go ahead. <laughs> so, um, well, first I'll, I'll ask you a question. Do you think that video is conclusive that he was in the head, hundred percent? No, ninety nine point five, ninety nine point nine. All right. So then, I mean, I don't know what we're here to discuss. Um, oh, I know you, what we're here to discuss, and this is actually my next point. What does it change? So the re the reason why it's relevant, and this dovetails with your le your absurd legal argument, is what Destiny just told you. The Slow down, baby. Issue... We just made up. Why you gotta throw fucking mean? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, but th the key issue in this case, as Destiny just explained, is the state of mind of Kyle Rittenhouse and whether or not it was reasonable and whether or not he used reasonable force. Essentially, so much of this case rides on Rittenhouse's beliefs at the moment in time and whether they were reasonable. Now, you would agree, wouldn't you? that a reasonable jury in deciding, deducing whether or not um, Kyle Rittenhouse was justified in shooting 
would absolutely take into consideration the fact that he was hit in the head with a skateboard, wouldn't you? Uh, this isn't a skateboard. It's a fucking haymaker before he Whatever. To grab the skateboard. At, skateboard Any hit, after. right? I mean, uh, why you – just mm-hmm. answer the question. Like, the fact that he's hit is absolutely relevant to whether or not he had a legitimate, reasonable fear for his life or, or serious bodily injury, right? Yes. Okay. And so that is the ultimate legal question in this case. And there is doubt about this video. Now, I agree with you and Destiny. The weight of the evidence, if I were to decide, is that he was, in fact, hit in the head. And so that's that's what this, the facts for the prosecution are just really bad. Can I, and the, yeah, can I, can I pause you really quick? Because th- this is where it just smells like fucking lawyer bullshit to me, okay? So the, the thing is, let's assume the prosecution is correct in what they're asserting, okay? Kyle shot Mr. Rosenbaum because he fucking felt like it or some shit like that. He fucking, uh, he's running down the roadway towards fucking law enforcement. I see like three dozen fucking people around him right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fucking twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I see twenty people on screen right now. Somebody walks up behind him, knocks his hat, knocks his hat. Let's just say he doesn't get hit. They just knock his hat off, okay? Because that's visible. I know what you're going to ask. Somebody gonna ask, screams, it somebody screams beat him up. He falls to the ground because allegedly he's fucking lightheaded. And then five people swarm him. What okay. did the implication Counter, that he became... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I what know what you're going to ask. Implication? Okay, so let me fucking finish the question. Then you can answer it. We've wasted more time fighting over it than I would just asking the fucking question. So, so what changes about the fucking calculus if he was dizzy or if he got popped in the back of the head? The reason why you... Um would admit the evidence not even if you think it's not dispositive right and you could very well think it's not dispositive and i'm Can sure you that use you human words dispositive means it decides the case right what you're telling okay. me right now is whether or not he was hit in the head in this particular case it doesn't matter because ultimately there's just such overwhelming evidence that he was reasonable fear of his life whether or not he was hit whether or not he was a woozy and fell down uh you know tomato tomato um i don't need that evidence to show that he had reasonable fear that's what you're saying right uh, not not only am I saying that, I'm saying that the fucking lawyer is throwing shit at the wall. Oh, that doesn't okay, mean anything. But, <laughs> Sorry, guys. But just, just because in this particular case, um, you don't need that evidence, doesn't mean in other cases you might need that evidence. Uh, and you need to be able to give on a consistent basis uh, these evidentiary rulings, at least to some extent, uh, mm-hmm. to build your wall. You have, you have a brick, you got to build your wall, and you can't decide that well, just because there's so much overwhelming other evidence in this case that we don't want the prosecution to inquire about it maybe those other parts of the case are starting to crumble too and you or don't know can I, can i even actually give let me let me just change one other fact okay let's say that it is the case that earlier rittenhouse admitted that his memory around certain things is hazy right then let's say um rittenhouse is the only person to testify that he heard somebody say, get him, go get him. And we don't have video evidence of that, right? Let's say that that happens, right? Well, let's say now that we look at the video evidence, and it's possible maybe he didn't get hit on the head. Maybe there's like a pothole or something on the ground that both of those guys tripped over. It looked like he hit him, but he actually tripped. Well, if we can establish that there's a narrative that one, he didn't actually get hit, and two, nobody else heard anybody say, uh, you know, get him, and he just picks his AR-15 up when he gets around and starts shooting people that are like running towards him. Now the case looks a lot different from a jury point of view. Now it looks like maybe he tripped and fell and now he turned around and started shooting people. Is that the same type of self-defense as him getting smacked in the back of the head, falling over, someone screaming, get him? Now it starts to look a lot different, right? This is why you, when Pisco says brick by brick, none of these things are gonna be like the killing shot for like this one thing establishes self-defense. You have to go towards building that mindset of Rittenhouse at the time. Okay, but the, this, is, this is my frustration because this all feels like, I already know I'm gonna trigger you with this shit. So this all feels like it's completely antithetical to all of the available evidence. Not only that, it seems okay. to completely diverge from the evidence that's In this particular case, perhaps, but also keep in mind, some of the other evidence may not be relevant. Let's say that for whatever reason, the Why evidence... Is... Well, I, oh, sorry, 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 may not be... To... Sorry, not relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, my apologies. I misspoke. I misspoke. Uh, may not be admissible. For, for whatever reason. So, so okay, say for- can I, can I ask you why? Because, because this is what this all fucking boils down to. I know we fucking disagree. I know I'm not gonna fucking win y'all over, but I'm asking this fucking question. Why is it within your fucking moral or judicial fucking framework for the prosecution only, 
Not the no, defense. No one's saying for the prosecution, Just the prosecution only. Prosecution. Both. I'm saying prosecution only. We're I'm not. saying oh. as the uh, proposed... I'm saying as a proposed new system, that's okay, 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 the okay. entire fucking conversation. God damn. <laughs> okay. As a proposed new fucking solution, you say, defense, you do whatever the fuck Destiny and Pisco wants you to do. Be as fucking weird about fucking truth as you want it to be. I don't give a fuck, right? Uh -huh. As long as you don't get disbarred, who gives a fuck, right? And then for the prosecution, say... Do not deviate your fucking narrative from the available evidence to the point that it's obvious to everybody. But Nobody's doing not. that. IQ above eight. What the fuck? <laughs> Nobody's deviating from the evidence. We're just—it's just a different story They're to explain it. what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah it's okay, all okay, about the framing. No, 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 no. The word that destiny Let's chose bore down. Let's bore down. Let's bore down. We, I know. Maybe y'all don't know. I, I would assume Pisco would fucking know, unless he's just avoided criminal fucking law for fucking ever. That the situations that unfold within a violent fucking scenario within several fucking seconds, there were plenty of things that the fucking prosecution implied and said during the fucking uh, cross examination of fucking Kyle Rittenhouse that literally a fucking like a fucking video game player like fucking Destiny who went to a special it forces awful. fucking places. No, he could not have pulled off what the fucking prosecution was saying. So why was that done in the first place? Why was there a deviation between the available evidence and what the prosecution was saying? Wait, did, did is, it, is it a lie that Kyle Rittenhouse has, uh, has played first person shooters before? Is that a lie? The key word that Destiny used here and the one that you need to get in your head is story. Basically, he's correct in saying, and, and one of the reasons why um, your opinion is absurd is because the prosecution is duty-bound to give exculpatory evidence over to the defense. They're not supposed to hide um, exculpatory evidence for themselves. There's a little case called Brady. Um, you might have heard of like a Brady I mean, violence. But I, but I, so, okay, okay, I'm not trying to say this is systemic, but I'm saying that I'm aware that this has happened in the past. So like oh. you can you can tell me the ideal, but I know that the ideal is sometimes broken. This is like no. me telling you what I learned in fucking police officer fucking field training. Okay, but your system is what silly. the system works. Your your system would have more problems, and this is how I know because I'm now I'm finally going to address your second question, which is um, why are we all even allowed to present this essentially this question of reasonable fear to the jury when it's just so obvious? That kind of thing, that kind of thinking, that is the ultimate purpose of having this jury in the first place is to determine uh, before we, we talked about common sense in kind of like a, a negative way but for the for the jury it really is a question of common sense reasonableness prudence and that's what juries are supposed to excel at now you you say well juries are stupid but they're called upon to use their their judgment in everyday life to to solve these difficult uh difficult questions and if you're fearful of government um overreach or prosecutorial overreach why then would you put the decision as a matter of law in deciding whether or not this was reasonable fear or not in the hands of one judge or uh, hands of, 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 I don't the know, state, I guess just the prosecutor. Essentially. The state, yeah. essentially. It, it okay. seems like so we're, you are fearful we're, of we're, checks on, uh, on, the, on the one hand, you're like fearful of the, the prosecutorial overreach, but then you're also fearful of the common person deciding these questions and being the check on prosecutorial overreach. And I, and these sort of values seem at odds. Okay. So let, let me, let me see if I can explain it because maybe, maybe y'all would understand. All right. So let's, uh, let's say y'all said I didn't fucking understand you. I don't know why you're fucking laughing, baby boy. Well, I think we so, all understand each other here. I don't think it's like a matter of like, we just right. can't communicate, but okay. All right, right. Then let me give you a hypothetical. So fucking check no. and jerk off in the fucking it's all over my Jesus head, dude. Christ. I just, you have to stop yelling, man. Dude, fucking chat, chat, it, the degeneracy, when you're talking about jurors, you're talking about chat, all right? So that's what you're talking about. Let's be real here. And I so think the fucking... J just... <laughs> fuck, hold on. Okay. The reason why we're missing each other on this... Uh, before, uh, okay. It's because like, we're looking at this one case where I think we can all say it looks pretty obvious that, like, Rittenhouse is probably going to walk on all the major shit because of the totality of video evidence available, right? That's, that's probably the case here, okay? The problem is that... There are a lot of cases where it can look really bad, but you want to have this system in place for those cases where somebody didn't commit a crime. I'm sure we've all been in a situation in our lives where we're in an area or we walk out of some place and it looks hella fucking guilty. Shit is like almost beyond explanation. And like 
if you're in like a personal situation, people are just gonna assume you're guilty, right? Um, if you happen to, uh, let's say that your phone dies, but you're at a club that night and then you leave and your girlfriend finds out that you were at the same club as some other girl that you used to date or whatever, holy shit, this looks really bad. I swear to God, it's not, right? You're already fucked in a personal case where we wish we could have trial by jury, right? Because now we need to provide a higher standard of evidence than it looks bad. But what you're telling me is that that standard of evidence of it looks bad or in, in Connor's world, it looks really bad, should be enough to either get a conviction or escape one, I guess, depending on what you want to play your bias on, right? But the, the point is, is that these like fringe cases can happen and we want a system where the onus is on the prosecution to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt to make sure that the system is working as intended. Otherwise, we're going to have these convictions where it's like, ah, oh, you know, there's like a 1%, like 1%, that's a really high percentage or, or, when or, millions or, of cases are tried. But you, but you haven't said around. anything that I disagree with or okay, anything no, but, that but, I think but, the system would change. But, but imagine the other way around. Imagine that it's so obviously not a case of reasonable fear where Destin literally just walks up to a, I don't know, someone on a beach chair and just caps mm. him in the brain because he stole his iPod five weeks ago or some shit. And um, it's just so obviously not like reasonable fear or something. One of our constitutional values in this country is the right to a, a jury by trial for, for these criminal cases. Um, and would you be comfortable the other way around with a judge that's deciding as a matter of law um, that that he didn't have the option to argue self-defense? Okay, is it okay? But this is this is my question here because we have we're using examples that seem like extremely fucking nebulous. Whereas, like, isn't that the whole fucking point of a grand jury is so that it's not one person determining whether or not something goes to trial in the first place? Isn't that the whole fucking point of a grand jury? That's a, that's a check on prosecutorial. That's another check on prosecutorial authority. One thing that you didn't mention in all of your in all of your analysis is um, there are places where. Judge, where there's gatekeeping rules before it gets to trial. In order to get to trial, one, very often, especially if it's a federal case, um, you need to have a grand jury indictment, right? That's not much of a check because usually it's, you know, it's an ex parte proceeding. Only the prosecution is allowed typically. Um, so that's not a big check. But another one is like the preliminary hearing where a judge has to determine as a matter of law whether there's probable cause to arrest and, and, and to indict. And so th there are these checks on, on prosecutorial overreach. Um, that exist that are not the prosecutor but to sort of at the end when you're all ready for trial and the judge has determined this probable cause and like you're you're, you're getting through discovery keep in mind the discovery is happening you might uncover new evidence as destiny said was supposed that could be relevant I mean, uh, yeah can i yeah can i uh, this is something that would be new instead of us kind of um you know kind of just not agreeing with each other well can so, i say one last thing one, one last yeah, point of course. I think, uh, the, the possibility of uncovering new evidence late in the discovery period is is totally possible so mm -hmm. one of the aspects that precludes this um in in certain circumstances the exercise of self-defense is provocation and so if we had evidence that kyle rittenhouse had texted his friends and said oh i can't wait to just go there and provoke someone to attack me so i can kill them that would be extremely relevant evidence to determine whether or not he gets to take advantage of self-defense. And your system, it seems, would like, I don't know, when do you cut off the ability for these parties to argue for or against self-defense? After discovery? Right before trial? like Or before you have discovery? No, it would be, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would actually, uh, thank you for asking that. that. Wow, what a good faith question. Um, so the fucking, the, the point would be, it wouldn't be so much as, and, and I'm going to ask you my question at the end of this, it wouldn't be so much about like grand juries who goes to trial, anything like that. It's more of like a code of conduct for the fucking prosecution about what they are allowed to introduce and in what way and why, right? And so what I would say is that this is, was kind of Destiny's point that I, I took issue with earlier. He was saying that these terms are so nebulous that like uh, we use relevancy, right? Like, you know, one man's relevancy wouldn't necessarily be another man's relevancy and all that kind of stuff. But what I would say based on previous conversations with you as well, is that we can codify these things into pretty strict definitions that actually do have like legalistic precedent. And then we use those fucking cases in order to like uh, describe and make those terms functional so we can have a system that kind of works, right? And so what I would say is that there is a, you know, th there is a deeper line for prosecution that could be drawn where you say like, fuck the hat, Let's just talk about the shooting, okay? Specifically with the fucking shooting, introducing implications that are physiologically impossible for the highest trained individual within uh, like society should not be something that's done as a part of a prosecution in order to get fucking shit to stick. Can you okay. can you explain that a little more? Is, you mean, what do you mean by that? Sure. Okay. So basically, like the 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 line of questioning 
that the prosecutor engaged in, this is my read on it, I hope I have a social IQ higher than a fucking goldfish, is the fact that, like, when he got kicked in the face, he should have evaluated whether or not that was a threat to imminent death or great bodily harm, and then dismissed it because it was just a kick in the face. And then when it came to the skateboard, he should have evaluated that as an individual incident of, uh, you know, threat of great bodily death or harm, and then he should have dismissed it because it wasn't a threat of great bodily death or harm. And then when uh, Mr. Grosskritz or whatever drew a firearm on him, he should have done some kind of like, uh, you know, calculus, uh, utilitarian calculus about whether or not he should surrender to the mob. Um, and basically determine that Grosskritz could have shot him earlier and therefore was just trying to apprehend him, despite later evidence showing that Grosskritz did intend to shoot him, and that he should have just, uh, you know, basically evaluated that as a threat yeah, we, okay. and determined whether or not that was fucking lethal. We know that's not the, how the human mind works. For, we okay. know that there's more fucking context to this fucking situation that basically drives the situation, and yet the implication is total and utter but, but the Horse question shit. is, who decides that? It's a question of institutional competency. Do you imbue the power of deciding what's obvious about human nature in the hands of the state and, and the judge? Certainly on some matters. Can, can, that, can that not be codified? It can though? be. No, it, it, can, it absolutely can be. And there, and there are certain things for which for which that is true. It and probably is, like fucking alcohol, whether or not that's Hold like on. a Hold on, just to be clear, the case. reason why this, we say it could be codified, the reason why it probably couldn't be is because there's like a billion different variables. This would be like a 27 trillion lines of code in order to actually figure this out. So for instance, does somebody striking you on the back of the head represent a threat? Well, we would have to take into account, what's the circumstance? What's yes. the prior relationship? Where are they at? How big are both people? Do they have a history? What what is the uh, what is the type of strike? You know how hard are they hitting? Can we tell how hard they like? There is a billion different variables that you would have to take into account. Where I can give you situations where it's like one hundred percent clear he should turn around and kill the other dude. I can give you situations where it's a lot less clear, and I can give you situ situations where they absolutely shouldn't. To codify that into law would be, and this is just in one interaction, it, would be unbelievable. <laughs> it, it, it's like fair use. It's like fair use. It's like tort law. Mm -hmm. Think about think about tort law. Um, the reason why we have these like balancing tests, the reason why we have things like fair use where there's these four factors, by the way, it's, it's not just transformative na the nature of the content, there's other factors to consider, is because we don't know what the next fad is that's going to be for, for like using content. Who knows if like the rea half the reaction content to which politics um, would be considered fair use? How, how would we know enough in advance to predict how art is going to change? Similarly, in, in, in the realm of tort law, how are you going to predict like every possible negligent act that could occur? Think about like, oh, now we're going to have all these rules. I'm thinking of the Alec Baldwin situation. You're going to have all these like special rules written down about whether or not Alec Baldwin is per se liable for negligence in advance uh, before he actually does the act. That's like unworkable. That's why we have trials. And no, similar, no, 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 and no, 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 because this is actually a really fucking bad example, because I almost guarantee you that there's fucking union laws about who's responsible for what. Uh, no, I, no, okay, okay. Stop. I guarantee that, uh, that, no, I'm not going to stop. Both of y'all fucking talk for fucking 10 goddamn minutes. Fucking let me go. Goddamn. So fucking. No, and then on top of that, Destiny, you already brought up the fucking four variables of fucking consideration and pretending that we can't build fucking precedent now. This shit is bullshit. And then on Wait, top hold on, of that, stop I'm saying can't build precedent. That's different than like codify it okay. into like. Uh, here, here, the, the easiest question on this is like, what about obscenity? Uh, can you tell me if something is sexual or not by looking at it? I mean. Like, can you give me a code uh, wait, wait, to wait, say wait, by wait. which, what, can you give me a code to say which all thing, and it, well, the code will tell us with all things which are sexual or aren't sexual. Oh, well, if you let me finish my fucking meme, uh, it's like the American judicial system and then it's like fucking Atlas holding up the fucking world and then it's like objectively reasonable or whatever, you know? What yeah, I'm the reason it's oh. is because yeah. it's really hard to do this stuff and just to make it even harder, that's an example of obscenity. Obscenity isn't just sexual. It has to be sexual that appeals to the quote prurient interest mm -hmm. like what the hell does that mean like when there are a ton like, of people with child porn know. in their photo albums right there are people that take pictures of their nude kids in the bathtub or out swimming or whatever right is that child porn right or there are cases where like when you see these little pageants with these kids is that sexual or there are cases when you see teenagers making out on tv is that sexual right there, I, the reason why i bring this up is because we literally have like a court standard of like i think it's still used the coll colloquial expression of i'll know it when i see it right because you literally can't get more specific than that it's okay, impossible okay, to okay. do it yeah, 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 yeah okay so this is this is my problem with that um i know it when i see it you don't fucking know it 
because a lot of the things that we're talking about, particularly when it comes to fucking violence, they're very in-depth fucking subjects with like psychology and sociology and physiology and like all that kind of shit behind it. And as a result, creating a cheat sheet for this is what happens during a violent encounter that is like physiologically and psychologically and so, you know, socially common, that would be helpful for a juror, part or uh, a jury. Part of the reason why I'm so frustrated with the way that shit gets thrown at the wall is because it's thrown at the wall because they know that the jury is ignorant to the fucking facts that would countermand it. And on top of that, Destiny was saying that, like, in order to countermand the thing that should be known, you should call a fucking expert witness. And then I brought up, which I think is still a fucking salient point, the fact that the logistics of a fucking public goddamn court system basically eliminates a shitload of people who go on defense from being able to hire fucking expert witnesses to testify on their behalf when it comes the to violent you're situations. you're talking about. Uh, the expert, there are so many cases in our, in our legal system are battles of the experts where juries have to listen to a bunch did you even watch the Chauvin trial? I mean, that case was determined in many ways by the expert witnesses on cause causation um, and the expert witnesses on use of force. And so what you're saying is just not true. Experts are used all the time. And also, there's no, like, objective... Are, are, you, are you saying that, like, in a fucking assault charge in downtown fucking Orlando, they're charging it, they're calling in fucking, but like, expert witnesses again, in order to testify like, on the violent outcomes of a fucking assault charge with a public defender and a fucking state I, I'm prosecutor? I'm not just... I, I, I promise because I already not, know the answer is no. My, my I already promise, know the answer is no. I promise my intention is not just to parrot destiny, but you have nothing to say to what his response was. And his response was mm. that is a completely different issue dealing with public uh, funds and the extent to which. So, uh, the reason why I bring this up is all of a sudden, uh, suppose that we just funded all those public defenders, that argument goes away for you. And that, no, no, that, that the no, problem. No, how, how does it not? If public defenders because are paid... Because I still think there should be a fucking cheat sheet for the goddamn jury about, like, okay, fucking but, obvious things that occur you just, in you just every single situation. You just brought up public defenders not having the benefit of using expert witnesses because they're just so, so overworked. Uh, suppose that they because do Because I'm not trying to jerk off a fucking cotton cotton industry of fucking witness, uh, like, expert witnesses. What I'm trying to do is... There, like, how, so you don't want experts? How do you... Want experts. Sorry, no, I, how do you... No, 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 no. How do you guys... I swear to God, I know both of you are fucking 200 IQ fucking giga, giga brains, right? How the fuck do you not see... Like, like you can use coherent science and, like, fucking established fucking, you know, uh, known things, and, and up, you can update the science as you go. But oh, how so you, you want say, experts. You do want so experts. How, okay, no, I don't want to pay somebody $300 <laughs> a fucking okay, hour to do, fly in from San Francisco. No, Pisco, shut the fuck up, because this is bullshit. I don't want to pay some dickhead from San Francisco to fly in for $300 a fucking hour to say shit that is explainable with a fucking Wikipedia article and things be fucking corroborated through fucking like scientific consensus and updated over time by fucking bureaucrats so no i don't buy into let's go into the fucking cotton industry of paying fucking like so you don't the, trust the, experts no no no, no, no. as a matter them. of fact this gets exactly into the fucking problem Who do you trust? is that no no no, no. this gets exactly into the fucking problem where the fucking judicial system the reason why people say that the judicial system is based for the fucking rich is exactly because of what you're fucking talking about where people who can pay fucking witnesses 300 dollars an hour in order to fly in from a different fucking state to testify on their fucking behalf, they're getting off because people are fucking muddying the goddamn waters. But then dickheads who are barely able to pay their fucking bills don't get shit because their fucking public defenders don't know how to fucking work. And you're acting like it's not a big deal because the fucking prosecutors can throw whatever shit at the wall. I'm super curious. Okay. I'm yeah, super get the curious. fuck out of here with this no, shit. No, no. So here's my question. You don't uh -huh. trust you don't trust the jury to I solve these questions. Anybody. You don't trust. <laughs> the, <laughs> then how do we figure anything out? You don't trust by the building systems that check power. You fucks. <laughs> okay. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, the you, same you way we've always done it. Aren't you liberals? So who do you trust to solve these questions about reasonability and uh, use of force? The voters. And... So the same people that would the be on juries. Experts. Yeah. Wait, uh, I thought we the experts. experts. You dumb fucks. But you said you didn't want expert testimony. No, I don't want experts to fly into every single fucking case. I want them to come up with a fucking modern interpretation of the body of knowledge that's prevalent at the time, create the categories through which things can be evaluated as a set of jury instructions. That way they can sniff bullshit. Number one, I would like to prohibit the fucking prosecution from creating bullshit in the first place. But if you guys have to have your fucking well, then system... Deal with what instead of paying, no, I'm almost done. Instead of paying six dickheads to fly across the fucking country, getting paid obscene amounts of fucking money to 
testify at every fucking trial. I just build the fucking knowledge that's fucking corroborated by almost every publicly available source and then present that so, so juries can smell bullshit. So deal with what Destiny said. And what he said is you can try all you want and spend 10,000 years coming up with an awesome, great book that envisions every possible situation that could ever occur. And that is not enough. There's not enough time and money in the world to constrain, to, to create a perfect set of you every- You wanna explain perfect. the history of the common law system real quickly, Pisco? Yeah, yeah. So that common law system, how do you think that was built? How do you think this- By first of all, dickheads like us writing fucking treatises <laughs> on how to talk about complex shit, you fucking assholes. It, it, Holy it's, shit. It's, oh, don't write a new book, Connor. It's really complicated. Hey, what's the fucking history of the legal system? It's only 3,000 years old. What the fuck is this argument? Listen. Okay, wait, real quick. We're, no, uh, we're you, running out of time. You closing arguments because I have other shit okay. that I need to watch. And this is, we're looping. We're all psychotic okay. right now, my friends. You okay. can loop these nuts, but I love you both. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll start, and you can have the closing word, Connor, about that. Okay. All right. My name uh, is Connor. Oh, wait. Oh, you said so you started. My bad. Yeah. Um, it's fine. I know you don't like uh, rule of yeah. law. But that's, See, uh, I, was, I was interrupting intentionally to make the audience think that I was more important as a fucking shady debate tactic, like, like lawyers do. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that one of the great things about this country is the criminal procedural rights that our framers granted to us, chief among them the right to a, a trial by jury. And I think it really is um, wonderful awesome. that we have this, this system where um, two equal and opposite forces get to, to have a battle of the titans to, to get to truth. And I really want lawyers to be in charge of litigations and not have these sort of cabal of elites decide um, for all times um, the sort of central issue of each particular trial. Now, there is a room for gatekeeping, no doubt. There's room uh, for things as a matter of law, no doubt. But um, I, I don't think that's the central role of a trial, especially in issues which are so fact-bound, like self-defense and issues like fair use and tort. Um, I don't want this question not to be presented to the jury, and I want them lawyers to have liberal room to present their cases connor has presented you a dystopian view of lawyers that's really creepy and shady um he distrusts experts on uh, when they're hired to come to particular trials but he does trust them when they're hired to do grand treatises i i, I don't know what the differentiated thing is there he doesn't trust the people and i guess he doesn't trust prosecutor lawyers uh, prosecution or defense and so it sounds like Connor trusts himself to decide what is and what's not malarkey. And he, we shouldn't really bother with trials. We just listen to whatever Connor says and he'll tell you what's obvious and self evident. Peace, go. I love you, but you're such a straw man, little bitch. Ah, oh, fuck. All right. So, my turn. Yeah, Wait, you didn't shut yourself out. Oh, I'm, I'm Peace, go. I, oh, oh, by the way, uh -huh. I was promised a lawyer badge. Um, yeah, Igor, Igor is working on that flare, okay? I don't know where, what he's yeah. doing. Yeah, he's definitely jerking. I'm not off. coping, am I? It's definitely coming, okay. He's working uh, on it. All right, so sorry. I'm almost done with my fucking treatise, you fucking assholes. All right, so my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I identify as centrist or center right. I'm a former law enforcement officer and a former Marine. Um, I like violence. I like yelling at people. So despite me thinking that Destiny and Pisco are both fucking assholes, this is the way that I have fun. And frankly, I'm happy to have these little tete a -tete. So thank you for giving me an entertaining uh, evening. Uh, in closing, even though this was an impromptu debate, the state should not throw shit at the wall in order to obtain convictions and should be barred from doing so. I don't know why that's a fucking contentious point, but apparently it is. You, you guys are being a fucking obtuse, but you know exactly what I mean, and I think you know how you could fix the system, but you're coming up and basically, it, it's kind of like a just world fallacy, where you're just saying like, nah, like the system's good as it is. Like, whereas the history of common law is we make improvements upon the knowledge with which we use to fucking do uh, the, the, the criminal justice system. And what I'm arguing for, because you're right, I don't trust individual witnesses, uh, individual experts who are getting paid obscene fucking fees to fly in in order to testify to get rich people out of fucking, uh, out of jail and out of prison. But I would trust 
a collated body of knowledge that is like corroborative based off of like the perspectives of multiple witnesses and where or uh, experts and where the experts don't agree you could eliminate that from the fucking body of knowledge whereas the thing where there appears to be consensus you could use that for either like jury instructions specifically when it came to like violent crimes or you could use it as some kind of like informational fucking presentation to the fucking jury when they're going into drug trials the fact that you're acting like th th this is how fucking stupid this is for two motherfuckers who spend all goddamn day on fucking wikipedia learning shit and then fucking collating that into new information and then synthesizing that into new perspectives you're pretty fucking averse to doing the same thing for our fucking judicial system which i find super goddamn weird but that being said i appreciate it i had a lot of fucking fun i'm looking forward to the next one and destiny i do appreciate you allowing me to come on your platform and on top of that i'm super happy that we finally had something that we could yell at each other about uh back and forth so thank you, you. all did a great job thank you so much you're all beautiful people okay all right, see you guys later. Bye-bye. Okay.